Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing an old arm lock by the Soviet Olympic medalist Grigory Verichev. It's a very controversial one. You can argue for and against all day. So what we're going to be doing today is, of course, looking at it and try to see what arm lock it can be categorized as and also revise some old rules from old PDFs, specifically the 1985 uh, rule book. At least that's what I found. And also compare it to other arm locks that were banned at the time and also not banned. So we'll see because uh, the arm lock thing with the diving, it can be very controversial and debated. But uh, before that, please feel free to check out my book, The Origins and History of Judo. It is available on all Amazon platforms. I'm working on it also for a French uh, translation. So please, the link will be in the description below. So let's take a look at it. This is uh, Neil Adams uh, showcasing it. And uh, you see you thread the arm and you go down and lock the arms. Now you can have two effects. You can either lock the elbow or it can be on the shoulder. So here you see the way he turns it can be uh, very dangerous on the elbow. It's uh, diving immediately on it. However, we'll look at it again with a bent elbow, which can have a completely different uh, effect. But the way he threads the arm is uh, very similar to uh, te gatame. And te gatame is a handhold. So you see, uh, this is band but nonetheless you should see it um, this is what is called ude gaishi also uh, meaning uh, arm turnover and uh, you see you thread the arm you can either target the elbow by locking it with your shoulder or uh, you can target the uh, shoulder with other variations this is the standard variation and uh, this is not what verichev was doing but uh, nonetheless now uh, you can see um, it all starts from this particular uh, mechanics or particular movement so or form. So you have the arm underneath. If the elbow is bent, you can target the shoulder. If the elbow is locked, it's obviously targeting the uh, elbow. Now let's take a look at it uh, in a more controlled environment. So here he's locking uh, He's pushing on the wrist while the el elbow is is bent, which means it affects the shoulder very much like uh, an ude garami. But uh, this one is just holding with the arm alone or the hand alone. The arms are not entangled. So here you see uh, he's lifting him over and then trapping the arm and pushing it down. So which will lock the shoulder so he removes his knee and then applying pressure on the wrist which locks the elbow so um, it can be very creative with this arm lock you can also uh, do like a like just kind of like you're arresting someone and you pull the forearm and the wrist while the elbow is bent and it will uh, put a lot of pressure on the shoulder so it can be a, an elbow lock or a shoulder lock. So depending on how you do it. Now, if the elbow is bent, is a lot less dangerous, especially when you're falling. And I will tell you why. Here, for example, it looks like an ude garami, but the arms are not entangled. It's just laced in a sense. And you apply the same uh, pressure. Let's take a look at it again slowly. So Neil Adams threads his arm and then reaches beneath the skirt which if you look at it closely, it it bends the elbow. And then as you fall and rotate, it, it locks the shoulder because the shoulder is pinned, but the elbow is bent. And then you lift your hips towards them, which can be uh, an arm, uh, it's a shoulder lock. So let's take a look at an entry to Newaza from 1985. So if you look at C, it says when contestant obtains considerable effect by applying a strangle or a lock and then uh, goes to change into the ground without interruption not falling directly but however we want to talk about prohibited acts if you look at 
um, up you say applying uh, a joint lock solely on the elbow or anywhere other than the elbow that's uh, a huge infringement if you look at the last one before the Hansokumake it says to fall directly while applying or attempting techniques such as waki gatame so falling directly just diving and falling down now uh, that wasn't the case back in the 60s and the 70s let me show you what i mean so let's go back to 1974 and uh here you see endo against sato pulls so let me show you what he does he actually uh apply immediate pressure and drops down uh, so according to the 80 rules this is of course forbidden let's take a look at this one here he doesn't immediately falls he kind of rotates him but still it dislocates his shoulder and he had to withdraw he was not eliminated the korean but uh, nonetheless it was very dangerous today obviously this is uh, immediately forbidden so he rotates and then falls down uh, he didn't have the the shoulder pinned it was only the wrist and the elbow but still very dangerous now here this one he was given the arm lock he looked he it looks absolutely brutal but um, it came as an attempt of an uchimata he wasn't wrapping the arm and that's why he was given the ippon and also at one point he lets go but here for example look just pulls it and just dives on it he was eliminated so uh, the elbow lock of very chev so if you're threading and then falling so you have two options um, if the elbow is locked obviously that's an immediate uh, elimination but the very chev lock if it's the elbow is bent no not necessarily but then uh, of course you have to apply pressure on the shoulder once you're down so you can argue for and against it you can also say if he falls on his back the arm is falling on a padding the elbow the weight is underneath the elbow and the arm not above it so there's no crushing force you can debate back and forth but it's very versatile you see he took it and then he rotated while he was falling which can put the weight on top of the elbow so it's uh, it's now it's obviously banned but you know you don't want to have these black and whites but at the same time you kind of have to examine every elbow case by itself not all of them are uh dangerous or immediately just smashing the elbow it should be uh, case by case it's not the neck or the knee so if you have anything to add please let me know down below don't forget to check out my book this was Shadi and thank you for listening.